Hello everyone, welcome back to Zeros TV and another monthly update on the world of short selling with Ivan Chosevich from Breakout Point. Ivan, thank you for coming back. Thank you so much for having me again, Max. All right, so what happened in February? We had a, a slow month in January. Uh, as far as short reports go, the market went down and we talked a little bit about how uh, short sellers were tending to to avoid publishing. Do we see the same lull in February? We have seen a lot of reports, I would say. So, uh, you know, things are picking up. So we counted uh, uh, 14, uh, what we call calls or, or and, and or reports. Uh, so this is more than uh, in February last year when we had 11. Basically, out of these uh, 14, eight focused on uh, U.S. headquartered companies. We had three focusing on uh, Chinese companies. First reports uh, focusing on a Swedish company and on a Canadian company even. So very, very versatile picture. And as I mentioned, uh, even a higher, higher volume than last year uh, in February when we had 11 compared to these 14. All right. Well, we'll get into some of those calls. But what about the previous short targets um, that had come out last year? How did they fare? Because uh, as well, uh, it's important to track how those those reports have done over time. Sure, I uh, think uh, the uh, overall, uh, obviously, overall environment was very favorable uh, to to the short sellers. So uh, many of uh, stocks uh, did uh, then a further decline, uh, uh, also to to a great extent to to overall weakness. Uh, but we did uh, see some. Uh, uh, wins uh, uh, also based on uh, uh, the the thesis which uh, uh, which were proposed by by short sellers last year. So overall, when it comes to what is what happened in uh, February, so and then if we if we focus on these new reports from February, they did decline on average eight percent, which is in line with what we often use as a reference. So with the February decline of uh, uh, IRKK. Okay, so short sellers keeping up with ARKK at least after last year being able to to outpace Kathy downwards. Um, well, let's get into one of those major reports. Uh, the Swedish company. I am not going to try and pronounce this name. I, I'm interested to see your attempt here. Oh, uh, can I suggest that you put it uh, on the screen, the screen, uh, the letters? And this is my best try. So I apologize to Swedish uh, listeners. It's uh, Samhal Bygnas Bolaget. Okay, and uh, Mr. Uh, Viceroy did say in uh, in their tweet that it's hard to pronounce, but it's actually even harder to justify value of this company. So uh, uh, that was also them uh, joking uh, a bit on on uh, uh, this bit uh, longer name. Uh, but uh, 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 Viceroy uh, came out with with their uh, new report focusing on this Swedish real estate company. Basically, the main allegations uh, revolve around. Uh, Undisclosed related parties, uh, transactions, uh, dubious accounting, and uh, some insider, uh, what is called the self dealing. It's rather a uh, large company, so 6 uh, billion market cap. Uh, the company did provide a comprehensive uh, uh, response to uh, uh, Viceroy a few days later. So, so far, shares are actually higher than before the report, 7%. Right after the report, that was interesting. So, it, it uh, you know, there were some interpre interpretations of a, of a short squeeze there. Right Right after the report, they went up as much as 25%. Uh, but again, now let's say only 7% higher. And uh, uh, Viceroy is usually following up a lot on the, on the campaign. So we will continue to follow also what, uh, what happens uh, uh, there and how the shares further develop. Now, what about Spruce Point? They were one of the most prodigious publishers last year, putting out a, a number of reports. They're already on their second report of 2022. Who did they take a look at? Yeah, so they are keeping keeping their usual pace of uh, about uh, you know about dozen reports uh, per year or, or about ten reports, and uh, they did focus on uh, C3 AI. So that's uh, a 2021 uh, IPO. Uh, it's an uh, artificial intelligence company about 2.5 uh, uh, billions and uh, it's mainly about the uh, what they uh, uh, interpreted as a poor business model and uh, uh, aggressive accounting so spruce does uh, look a lot on accounting uh, uh, parts of, of the company so that's not uh, unusual for them basically they also believe that the 
revenue will start falling off because they are too dependent on the main partner that uh, uh, might cease uh, to uh, sell their products. So, so far the shares are down about uh, 15% while they see much more downside uh, about uh, 40%. Okay, well, obviously the, the world of short selling is probably not where most people are focused right now with tensions in Ukraine and Russia, um, but many businesses have connections to Russia or they rely heavily on Russia for, for parts of their revenues. We saw the first short report come out that, that referenced you know, Ukraine and Russia and that as being a risk for the company. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about that one. Sure. That was uh, uh, actually uh, just a few days ago. It was a uh... Uh, a preliminary report by uh, White Diamond Research, so very well known in, in short selling uh, uh, area, and they focused on uh, one of the popular uh, companies uh, in uh, recent days due to the uh, developments in Ukraine, which is Ironet, uh, that's a US cyber uh, security uh, company. So basically, White Diamond uh, came out uh, with a report after the shares went from about $4 to more than $6. Uh, apparently, mainly due to the blog post by the company where they you know put some parallels between their uh, uh, product and uh, uh, NATO initiative and uh, uh, also seemed according to the Y Diamond to try to jump on this bend van, uh, bend the wagon of popular narrative so uh, defensive stock cybersecurity stock and so on so Y Diamond sees it differently Okay, so this wasn't like somebody coming and finding a company that had exposure to Russia. This is a company actually taking advantage of the turmoil and trying to use this as a as a way for for PR or maybe to to juice the stock. Why Diamond uh, uh, sees it uh, uh, mainly like that? Uh, so basically, indeed, they are not uh, uh, affected by by the Russia developments, but they are cybersecurity company, and uh, these companies are in the focus. Uh, alongside uh, defensive companies and uh, some other companies that uh, uh, could uh, benefit, uh, unfortunately, for such conflicts. And uh, they did uh, point out that it's uh, basically empty balloon, this uh, balloon, this uh, uh, blog post by the company. And uh, the shares did decline following uh, that report uh, more than 30% or about 30%. So that was uh, very, very timely for the white diamond. So they do see a lot more uh, downside. And this is not the first time that they focus on uh, a cyber co- uh, uh, security company. They focused on one, uh, uh, I think, uh, last year. The company went, uh, uh, hit their uh, downside target of uh, 85%. That was a company called Intrusion. So it's basically also yet another mini clash between retail verse and short selling ver- universe because Ironet has also been in a lot of retail investors focus uh, in the past days. Well, as well, White Diamond just came on Zero's TV a few weeks ago to talk about AuthID, which was another uh, cybersecurity uh, company. So definitely in their wheelhouse there. Um, you opened up the world of the retail verse. What is the retail verse talking about right now with all of this stuff going on with Russia and Ukraine? I mean, uh, uh, obviously, as a, as the rest of the the world, uh, a lot of attention is uh, uh, being uh, uh, devoted uh, to 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 these developments. And in terms of uh, the uh, tickers and stocks that uh, uh, retail investors are uh, uh, following, these are mainly energy stocks, defensive stocks, uh, and cyber security, uh, cyber, you know, stocks related to cyber security. As well, do, they do look a lot at Russian ETFs and are either looking at uh, the put opportunities or are uh, hoping for eventual turnaround down the line in, in these uh, beaten down in, indices. So uh, that's that's the main uh, uh, sort of the narratives that we are observing in these days. All right. So looking, itching to buy the dip. Eventually, yes. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to a report that actually multiple people have published on. We had Blue Orca on back in 2021 to look at Standard Lithium, and then Hindenburg came out again with something on Standard Lithium. What was the difference between what Hindenburg was focused on compared to what Blue Orca focused on? Indeed, uh, the Hindenburg uh, uh, focused uh, now in February uh, on uh, SLI, so Standard Lithium, Canadian company. 
uh, and the angle is uh, uh, somewhat different than the blue, blue orca's angle. So while uh, blue orca uh, looked at uh, the alleged uh, insider enrichment scheme, uh, Hindenburg actually looked at uh, some of the patents that uh, a company uh, claims to provide them with superior technology and uh, questioned the, the quality uh, of, of these patents. Uh, so that's definitely an interesting one to, to follow uh, also in the uh, upcoming months. So two uh, uh, very important names in the uh, activist short selling world uh, did focus on, on the same company and uh, so far Basically, the shares are down uh, 13%, uh, 13% since Hindenburg uh, uh, focused on them. So we might see further developments uh, and further updates when it comes to Thunder Lithium. Okay. How often do we see that sort of double dip action where uh, one short seller will publish on something and then another short seller will come at it from a different angle? It's fairly rare. It happens, you know, definitely uh, multiple times per year that the different uh, uh, short sellers focus on the same uh, company, but it is more likely that the angles uh, that they focus on overlap somewhat. So it's uh, uh, less uh, that they focus on completely different angles, but we do see that and that's always interesting to see. Uh, two entities focusing on the same company and uh, coming to bearish co conclusions so, uh, from different angles. Yeah, and as well, we had another um, company that we looked at here on Zero as a Vulcan, um, an Australian listed direct lithium extraction company. Um, so there, there's a, a history of these direct lithium companies um, not faring as well as uh, investors would like. And so uh, there's a lot of focus on that industry in general, as well as on, on standard lithium in particular here. But I want to move on to another topic that is huge in the short selling world. Um, and that is the Justice Department probe into short sellers. Uh, lots of reports as, as people have been served subpoenas and warrants came out in the past weeks in February. Um, Elon Musk has gone and, and cheered it on, but we still don't know much about it. If you read, you know, the the reports, I mean, different different organizations are reporting different things are being looked at, from um, spoofing to scalping to communications between short selling firms and and aligning on on reports. So it seems to be pretty wide reaching. You know, what are you seeing around this this probe? Uh, indeed, the the. the uh... Updates uh, in media are frequent, but they are not so substantial, I would say. So they are mainly uh, around uh, some assumptions what's going on and uh, what, what might be going on and so on and uh, so on. So uh, one of uh, very interesting uh, updates that we have seen uh, uh, recently, uh, it's very much related uh, uh, to this probe, even if indirectly, has been a, a, a white paper by uh, published by uh, Carson Block of uh, Muddy Waters, where he focused uh, actually on the research of uh, uh, Professor Josh uh, uh, Mitz, uh, the author, the well-known uh, short and distort uh, uh, research paper. So basically, this is a very uh, detailed uh, uh, rebuttal uh, or, or actually a white paper that points out to, to uh, certain flaws in, in uh, that paper. And uh, Max, maybe uh, I'm sure you also had a look uh, at uh, these developments. Maybe you can add some color about the uh, white paper and the research paper itself. Yeah, well, I haven't read uh, Carson's white paper. I did know that it was coming out and that he planned on on breaking down uh, what he felt at issue with Joshua Mitz's paper. In terms of you know what I knew about it, it was it was the amount of time between when the paper was published and the data that came out. Um, because it didn't allow people any time to really peer review or to go over it. And then as well, the paper's findings uh, seem to be at odds with a lot of what the rest of the academic research on the short selling world was, which almost exclusively has said that short selling provides a benefit to markets, whereas Joshua Mintz's paper clearly uh, by the title, you know, short and distort um, would, would lead you to believe otherwise. Um, and then there was issues with uh, just how many people in in his data set were actually short. You know, they were just research writers rather than the short sellers that are being targeted by this probe, the people who are who are really actually out there shorting these companies that they're writing about. So those are the main issues. But, um, you know, having not not fully read it myself, I would encourage everybody to go take a look at that paper, um, Carson's white paper, as well as Joshua Mintz's paper. 
Yeah, that's another interesting uh, uh, development, uh, which uh, might not go going or doesn't seem to go as far as many have wished. So basically, uh, in the US, uh, the, there was a proposal for a new short selling uh, uh, rule by your security commission uh, that uh, will uh, lead to more disclosures when it comes to short selling. And uh, basically, it seems that uh, these disclosures will mainly focus on aggregate levels, so not on many manager levels. It also seems that the frequency, frequency of disclosures will be only monthly. So basically, this will add some additional transparency, but not so much as, for example, we already have in Europe. So in Europe, uh, uh, many of uh, your US listeners uh, might uh, know or might not know that, but in Europe, we have a specific uh, uh, short selling uh, regulatory disclosure framework where money managers are required to publicly disclose uh, their short positions once they cross uh, a threshold of uh, 0.5 short interest. And uh, what is very interesting about this uh, framework is that today, we can actually observe what uh, are, were the big shorts of uh, all the many managers across the Europe from yesterday. So it's only one day of delay in Europe. Let's see if that gets some uh, bit updated at the moment. You know, only aggregate level and only monthly uh, uh, level of disclosures is something uh, that many thought is not sufficiently. Well, that is just a proposed rule at this point, so still up in the air. I want to switch to uh, speculation, not just proposals, but to speculation. Uh, you know, some people are, are questioning whether you know Europe loves to ban short selling in times of turmoil, and with many European companies obviously having exposure to Russia and and with the the threats of geopolitical um, issues breaking out further into Europe, uh, there have been some rumblings about whether short selling bans would happen in Europe. Have you heard or seen any chatter around this? I mean, beyond uh, beyond Russia and uh, what uh, uh, what uh, we have seen that uh, you know Russia basically did ban uh, the short selling uh, in Europe itself. Uh, sometimes we are not picking up uh, such signals. Also on this disclosure framework that uh, we are at the breakout point uh, uh, tracking and following, we are so far not seeing massive short selling. Uh, across uh, European uh, companies related some, somewhat to Russia. So we are not really seeing, from that perspective, uh, big signals uh, where regulators might uh, feel that they need to react. All right. So let's look forward to March. Of those 14 reports that we saw, were there any interesting trends in terms of the types of companies that were targeted that you're looking for to continue in through the rest of the year? Not many new trends, I would say. So it's still not uh, we are still not seeing uh, a big major uh, trend, uh, new trend of this year. We are still seeing uh, specs being in focus. We are still seeing. Uh, uh, you know, typical uh, biotechs uh, being uh, focused due to the peculiar uh, drugs and so on. So we are not really still able to to pinpoint a new major trend on the short selling side. It's more of continuation of what we have been seeing uh, last year. Well, Ivan, thank you so much for coming on Zeros TV. Looking forward to having you back on again soon in March. Thank you so much, Max, and enjoy the day. All the best.